Hey friends, Petrina here with Homegrown Florida. Last week, we cleared out these four beds right here, and now it is time for the fun part. It is time to plant them. Last fall, I had an amazing harvest of squash, broccoli, cauliflower, kale, tomatoes, pretty much everything green that you can think about and so i wanted to set you guys up with the best possible success we are going to be putting these little guys in the ground today and i'm going to show you how to do that even with the high heat and the pest pressure that's still present so come along let's hang out So the first ones we're starting out with are these guys right here, which are the Chajimisai and the Tokyo Bekana. I have several of them, and as you can see, the pest pressure is definitely present. Even inside my screened patio, these guys are getting eaten alive. The strategy that I'm going to employ with these guys is that I am going to plant them. And usually what I would do is I would put a toilet paper roll around them. But they're pretty sizable. They're pretty big at this point, and so I don't think that the cutworms are really going to be a problem. What's going to be a problem right now is the slugs and uh, snails that I have growing in my garden. So what I did to prepare for this is I actually took all of the sprayers, the micro sprayers that point into my garden, and I turned them away for two weeks. <laughs> so that that way the, the garden and the raised bed here can really dry out as much as possible so that that way they will leave. Now that does mean that this bed is very, very, very dry and that's going to be tough on these plants because I am transplanting them now and they really like a lot of water when you transplant. So let's get these guys transplanted, transplanted. I'm going to show you exactly how I water them to try to keep um, that moisture still tucked away inside. So we're going to get these guys arranged first. I'm going to put them in their spots. Um, they like a about a one square foot, but I'm probably going to give them maybe eight inches. So one of the things I'm doing here is I'm putting them in a bed that is extremely shaded. This one only gets about four hours of sun, which is imperative right now. Because if you try to plant greens in full sun in Florida in September, it, they are going to die. They're going to struggle immensely. The other thing I'm doing is I'm picking some greens that I know for fact are really heat tolerant. And so this guy is a Chajimi sign. And then this one right here is a Tokyo Bacana. And I know both of these are very, very heat tolerant. It doesn't mean that they're not gonna bolt and the likelihood of them bolting is gonna actually occur when I transplant them. So if I can keep them moist enough and shaded enough, I can try to avoid them bolting prematurely. But don't be surprised if they actually do bolt because that will, that will happen during transplant. Now the other thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna to check to see how dry the soil actually is. So I'm gonna stick my finger down in there. It has the tiniest bit, the tiniest bit of moisture. So the, the mulch that I've been putting on here has really worked because other than the rain, which we have had quite a bit of it, uh, I have not been watering this at all. So I'm gonna make myself a little hole here. I'm just going to tip this guy out and I'm going to place him in the hole. And I'm going to backfill the dirt all around him. And before I put the mulch back on, I'm going to water him in. I'm going to kind of water all around him too in hopes that I can rehydrate some of this soil and then we're just going to add that mulch that was all around him back so that it can do its job and keep that moisture down in there Now the last step is I'm going to just give them another drink and I'm going to do this probably every day. I'm going to give them a full 
watering can, which is about two and a half gallons of water. At least my watering can is. I'm just going to keep getting them wet because as long as I can keep them hydrated, I can probably keep them from uh, bolting, which is the primary killer right now. So these guys might get eaten up a little bit. I'm going to come out in the evenings when I walk my dog and I'm just going to make sure that there's not like slugs and stuff coming up to them. If there are, they'll, I'll pick them off and destroy them. But the goal, they should be able to live through it. So the next bed we're going to be working on is this one and we're going to be direct seeding this. Um, we're going to have onions on this side and on that side we're going to do potatoes. I have learned my lesson when it comes to onions. Uh, I used to interplant them amongst other things and uh, in hopes that the, it would bring down the bugs and it does that does work the problem is is that they end up getting crowded out by all the other plants that i don't end up getting a bulb and that is my biggest problem that i am going to solve this year so the only thing that's in this side of the bed is this echinacea right here down here at the bottom i don't expect this to get super huge but even if it does it's just going to be in this corner and it might give a little bit of shade but then we have the rest of this half bed for the onions and I have several different onions here. I have some granex. Uh, I have a red burgundy, a red creole, a Texas early grano. Um, and these are all seeds that I have owned probably for two years now. So I don't have the most confidence that they are going to produce like I would like them to, but we're going to get them in the ground. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get this ground wet. Now that we have it nice and wet, then I'm going to kind of push this stuff out of the way, some of the mulch out of the way. And I'm going to create a little line. A lot of people choose to start onions in trays, and normally I do, but I know these seeds are old, and so I don't want to waste trays for a seed that I know is really old. So I might, if none of these come up, I might get another pack, then plant those in the actual trays. And I'm just gonna brush the soil over the seeds that I put in. You can definitely plant these a lot closer than what I'm planting them, but I'm expecting that I'm going to have to thin these out. I'm just going to keep working down my rows. You're probably going to laugh at this last part. I have a couple packets with just a few seeds and then the ones in my hand, and I'm going to broadcast them. And all that means is you're going to toss, mainly because these guys are old, and so they're not going to make it another year. So I might as well try it. But I have not had the best luck with broadcasting, and that basically just means throw the seeds on the soil. But because I haven't had the best luck with it, I don't typically do it. But given that I have all these seeds and I need to get rid of them, uh, might as well. I did my rows and there's not that many. And if we find purple ones or red ones mixed in with the white, then we know that the broadcasting worked because I did all the lines of white or yellow onions one line of red onions right along the edge of the center of the bed and then I broadcasted the rest of the red onion. So now all we have to do is water them in.
We got our onions planted, now it's time to plant one of my favorite things, which are potatoes. And I'm picking them up all weird because uh, some of them have mold on them, but that's okay. Uh, I'm going to plant them anyway. I unfortunately left them in the bag that they came in for way too long, and so uh, some of them have mold. I don't think that that is going to hurt anything. I have planted moldy, soft squishy potatoes before and they still do just fine um, so for this way we're going to do this a little bit different because i'm going to create furrows or or rows um, with my rake to plant the potatoes in now it has been a full long year since i've been able to plant potatoes because last season i decided i was going to cut my potatoes in half and plant them that way in hopes that I would get a better harvest. That does not work very well down here, especially in fall. I think it would work better in spring when we're in our drought season, but in fall, we have so much rain that they rotted before they ever, you know, sprouted and became plants. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create these furrows and then I'm gonna put my potatoes in them and then we're gonna cover them back up. So you probably saw me struggling a little bit with getting those potatoes planted and that's because this bed is really, the, the, the soil is very heavy. It's very dense um, and I don't know why. The only thing I can think of is I didn't have this planted almost all summer long. So I am going to till this side. So I left that side, dug them deep, but this side I'm going to till it up to soften the soil a little bit and see if that improves it or not. Now you didn't see me add anything because I actually already amended these beds in my previous video. And so they don't really need anything. I amended them knowing exactly what was going to go in here. And so now we're just going to water it in. It's going to take about three weeks for these guys to pop up, three to four weeks. And uh, I know exactly where I placed the moldiest one, which is right there. So we're going to see if that one actually pops up a plant. Thank you. 
Now the next bed we're going to be working on is going to be all carrots and I'm so excited. I have a purple carrot, I have a red carrot which is an atomic carrot and then I have my absolute favorite carrot for Florida, the new new Carudo, K-U-R-O-D-A carrot. So heat tolerant, beautiful orange color, perfect everyday carrot. Now carrots are very tricky this time of year because they need even moist loose soil for 21 days. <laughs> 21 days, yes you heard that. So I'm going to show you the little trick that I do to get my carrots to germinate even in the heat. So the first thing I'm going to do is loosen up all this soil because I know this is probably compacted just like the last bed and carrots hate, hate, hate compact soil. Next thing we're going to do is I'm going to rake in the carrot seeds. Now I would normally do like lines of carrots, but I did this last year and it worked and it's basically just sprinkling them. So that they're surface zone. So I'm going to do my new kudros there. Then we're going to separate them with the red atomic. And yes, I'm using whole packs. And so the idea behind this is, is I'm going to get a ridiculous amount. This is going to be like a whole patch of carrots and, uh, what I'll do is as they get bigger and they start to form their roots, my first harvest is going to be baby carrots. I'm going to pull the carrots in between the ones that are getting bigger that I want to get bigger. And I'll keep those little guys as baby carrots. And then I'll let the other ones that I left behind when I was thinning to become my uh, full size carrots. And man, did that work so well last year. I mean, I had something like, 35, 30 to 40 pounds of carrots last year. It was insane. Um, all doing this particular trick. Now I am moving beds because I had them in this bed last year and it did well. And I also put another round in another bed that I had used the year before. And carrots are one of those things that if you don't move them around, they will get disease. And the one in the other bed had a like white mold type disease. And so I know if I plant in the same space as I did last season, they will probably get that white mold. So I am rotating them around. So they were in that far bed, then they were in this bed. Now I'm going to put them in this bed. And I'm just kind of rotating them around so that that way they don't get that disease. So all the carrot seeds are down. <laughs> this is how easy it is. Now we're going to water it in and I'm going to cover them with cardboard. <laughs> just lay cardboard on top and that'll make sure that the, um, the seeds and the soil stay moist underneath the cardboard. And then you just have to check them every few days. Like I probably check them once a week. And as we get closer to the three week mark, I'll start checking them every couple of days to see when you see the sprouts. Cause when you see those little sprouts, the little seedlings popping up, you need to get that cardboard out cause they need sun right away. Otherwise they will die super, super fast. <laughs> Here. 
And just to make sure they stay super moist, I'm gonna actually water the cardboard. All right guys, we took a nice long break before we started working on this next bed. Uh, one, it's very, very hot. <laughs> and uh, two, uh, I hadn't checked on my tomatillos in a minute. Um, I had a kind of family emergency come up and I was away from the house for several days and I don't like to be away from the seedlings when I'm gone for several days because man, watering can just be pretty crazy. <laughs> so. These are my tomatillos right here. And if you can't see that very well, these are sad, dead, leggy, just, just sad looking plants. So if you ever think that I don't kill plants, proof right here, I kill plants. <laughs> I kill a lot of them. So <laughs> I do have this one right here. This is a tomatillo and uh, it is healthy. It is a little on the leggy side, I'm honestly not even sure how that happened, but it is a little leggy. And the thing I know about tomatillos or that I have learned about tomatillos is that you can't plant one plant. If you do, it won't pollinate and then you don't get fruit. Uh, so I do have this one in the back that seems to have fared a little bit better than the rest. I'm still not holding out a lot of hope for it just because it is leggy. Now there's one in the back here that's not leggy and it looks pretty good, but it's getting chewed up. I just don't have a lot of hope for these guys. But this whole bed was supposed to be tomatillos. So I'm going to chance it. And I'm going to put this one in. And I'm going to put this back one in. Uh, the both of them. And if you've noticed, this one has two plants as well. Um, I like to do that in case a cutworm comes through and takes one of them off. I have a second one there. So I leave the two that I usually grow. I usually grow two or three during this time of year because <laughs> because of that so two or three in each cell and then I leave them after I transplant them just to see how they do in case something cuts it down now if any one of these between this set and that set die honestly I'm going to just pull them because there's too much of a chance that the remaining one of this one or the remaining one of that one will die and then that means all all four are dead. It's just the chances are so low. So we're going to put these two in and I'm not going to have a lot of hope in this. But that means I have a whole half bed here that, that needs something. And so I thought, you know, I, I seeded a bunch of tomatoes and that's what I have here. I, I have a bunch of little pots that are a little bit older than that tray. And so I have a bunch of tomatoes. I did not intend on growing a lot of tomatoes this season. I was just gonna grow a couple in pots for fresh eating. But since I have this half a bed unexpectedly, I'm gonna put tomatoes in it. Makes sense. Tomatillos, tomatoes, they go well together. They take the same fertilizer. It'll be fine. So we're gonna put tomatoes in this bed. And I'm gonna show you how I plant my tomatoes. Now I am gonna also be putting in this bed these little guys right here, let me take them out because they are the coolest thing. Betty, a, a friend of the channel, sent me these and they are just, I've been having, I've been put them in water in a little cup of water so that the roots will grow. Oh, and now they're stuck together. Okay. The cool thing about these are they're called perennial multiplier onions. I don't know the exact variety name, but what they do is they split apart from each other. They are a green onion type of uh, onion. So they're not something like the walking onions that you might have heard about, but they do split apart and that's what keeps them perennial and they'll just keep splitting. So the thing you have to consider when you're planting something really cool like this is number one, it is a perennial. So it's going to be here for a long time. So I'm actually going to put it in this corner of the bed because I'm okay if it if it extends a little bit in this corner. This corner tends to get more shade from the plants that grow over here. But it's gonna be here for a long time, so I need to consider that. I also need to consider that this guy is a perennial and once I get him established, he will live for years and years and years. But the trick is to get them established. Now, the first thing I did was I put some water in the bottom of that uh, little container just to let these roots grow out. The roots were tiny, almost not even existent when she sent them which is how you should send them. So thank you, Betty. I'm really excited about these guys. But I wanted to grow out those roots nice and long so I can bury them as deeply as possible. 
onions are very, very forgiving, but this time of year it's very hot and I gotta make sure that these guys stay moist. So I'm actually keeping my hose out at all times uh, so that I can water this every single time I walk out here with the dogs, just to make sure that they get a nice solid base. So we're gonna be putting those guys in too. So this is going to change from the tomatillo bed to the perennial onion tomato and cross our fingers, hope at least one or two tomatillo plants for this season. The other thing I'm going to be doing with the tomato plants is um, Highlands Garden Supply sent me this. Now, if you guys have been watching my channel, you know I did an experiment with mycorrhizin before and it's expensive stuff and it did not work for me. Well, when I say it didn't work, I mean the plants grew fine. But I did one tomato with it and one without and they showed no difference. In fact, the one without seemed to do just a tiny bit better. So I have not used it since then. And now this is a whole different brand. And they, I told them about my experience. I told them about my previous video. And I told them that I only do good, bad, and ugly reviews, which means that if it does not go well, I'm going to tell that too. <laughs> and they were very uh, insistent that theirs is different and that it works well. So we're going to give this a shot. I'm going to put these tomato plants in. I'm going to pick these guys, these three, well, not that, no, these three, sorry. These three right here were planted the exact same time. Now, I feel like these two are closer in size, so we're going to plant these two with the mycorrhizin, and um, I'm going to separate them. I'm going to put one in this corner of the bed, one in that corner of the bed, and I'm going to use mycorrhizin on one and not the other, and we're going to see if it actually does do better. And so keep an eye on that and we'll we'll reference this later on as the season progresses to show whether it works or not and you will know because if it works really well you will see me buy a bunch of this and tell you guys all about it um, but if it doesn't work well I'm also going to mention that I usually do that in my um, garden tour videos so if you're not checking those out make sure to check them out because I always talk about stuff like this my experiments all right so let's get these guys in the ground we're going to start with the tomatillos the other thing that I pulled out were my paper towel rolls, toilet paper rolls. And that's because because these guys are leggy, because we're in the heat of summer still, and because the pest pressure is incredible. I want to put my little paper towel rolls around this or toilet paper rolls around this stem so that the cutworms that just are notorious and live in my bed, they have a barrier and this is a physical barrier. Honestly, I have tried probably everything, hand picking, BT, spinocide, uh, um, Ditanius Earth, everything that you can name, everything you can think of to get rid of those guys. They just, they're prehistoric. They live through everything. But I have noticed that they're lazy <laughs> and they don't like to climb over these things. They just want to get to their plant and be done. Most of the time they will not climb over this and in down in here to cut the stems. So that's why I use the toilet paper trick. So I've dug a nice deep hole and now I'm just going to put some, this is garden tone fertilizer. I don't have tomato tone right now, otherwise I would use that for tomatillos, but uh, garden tone should work just fine. And I've decided that I'm going to put the tomatoes right up front here. This is uh, four square foot, so they're basically getting like a, a foot and a quarter apart. Uh, maybe I'll do right here. I want to think of the best way that I'll remember this. And I think it's going to be... Yeah, let's do this. The corner one is going to get the mycorrhizin. They're all going to get garden tone. And then this one is going to get the mycorrhizin so that we can test it. Oh, it's very dark. It's like worm castings. That's interesting. Okay. 
So let's get these guys in next. We're gonna dig the holes. I'm gonna try to plant them as deep as possible. They're going to also get toilet paper rolls and uh, the mycorrhizin on this guy and the garden tone on all three. And then last but not least, we're going to stick these guys in, and they're really simple to do. So I'm going to do kind of a curve. You're just supposed to stick your finger in the hole. We're going to grab one of these. Oh, looks like I need a bigger hole. And we're going to make sure all those roots get down inside there. And then we're going to cover them up. And because I have some space, I have these, um, where are they at? These basil plants, they're actually very weird looking, but these basil plants I'm going to put in here too. They're called Mirani, I believe is what it's called. It's a type of basil that does really well in the heat. So I decided to take a little break in the shade, give my camera a chance to cool down because it keeps overheating, um, and do these guys right here, which are the rest of the tomato plants. Um, and I always have planned on putting them in pots this year for one main reason, which is that during the winter, here where I'm at in central Florida, I'm in 9A, I'm probably at the northern part of the central area of Florida, we get frost. I get frost every year. I usually get about two or three of them. Last year, our temperatures got down to like 23 or 26 degrees. I can't remember. Um, and that was enough to kill all my tomato plants. It happens every single year. So I'm going to try to get my tomato plants to live through those frosts by putting them in containers. And um, when we have those frost evenings, I'll bring them inside so that that way, or in my, in my um, shed here, to try to protect them so that I can keep them going through the winter season. And I also decided to buy cold tolerant varieties just in case, you know, it creeps down in the evening and I don't notice it. I have six types of tomatoes here. I have four pots. So I gotta pick my favorites. 
The rest of them, I'm probably just going to go ahead and put them in the bed where we've been putting um, the extras. But the ones that I'm going to focus on is the Slets, the Rosella Purple, which are two uh, cold varieties or cold hardy varieties. And then I'm going to do the Sweetheart of the Patio. That's probably going to go in my smallest container. This is not appropriate size for tomatoes. This is like two and a half gallons. This is tiny. But the Sweetheart of the Patio is a patio variety. It's a small dwarf variety. So I'm hoping that uh, that means that it's going to have enough room. And then I'm going to pick the large cherry. Um, I don't know if that's the actual name of it. I saved seeds back in the day when I was first learning how to save seeds and I didn't write the varieties down. So I just call it the large cherry tomato because it creates cherry tomatoes in abundance and they're very, very large cherry tomatoes. So my two biggest pots, I'm going to put the cold hardy varieties in and my two smallest pots, I'm going to put the uh, cherry and the sweetheart uh, of the patio. Now, I'm going to be filling up my pots different. Usually, I used to just fill it with soil, with bagged soil. But I have learned that um, if you fill these in a different way, you're going to have a lot better results in terms of not having to fertilize it as much because they are heavy feeders all on their own. But when you put them in pots, they're even worse. <laughs> so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put sticks. So I have some dead sticks that I've been saving up from some of my plant material. I have some bean plant material that we just pulled out from the, um, from the cleaning of the beds. I have some compost over here that I've been saving. I have my granular fertilizer. I'm probably going to try the mycorrhizin. I'm going to do one in the sluts, or sorry, one in the rosella purple and one in the slut, and not in the sluts. And then I have regular soil. And then behind me, this is the soil that I dumped out of these pots. So we're going to start layering. So let's get started with the layering. We're going to do the six. We're going to do, oh, I have uh, food scraps too. Let me go grab those. So I got my compost food scraps and they smell awful um, and it's really gross in there. So I'm not going to open that up and show you just yet, but we're going to start by clipping these little stems to fill up the bottom. I'm going to put some compost in. I'm going to put some fertilizer. This is uh, Garden Town. And I'm going to do this one, the Rosella Purple. So I'm also going to put some mycorrhizin down at the roots. But Let's get a little bit of dirt in this and we'll pull out our little tiny plant. Now I have two plants and I'm actually gonna put both of them, but no worries, I'm not keeping both of them in here. Um, I'm just doing this for just in case. If one dies, I have the other one. Uh, if they both live, cool but if they both live then one is going to get selected down got my trusty spoon put those guys there we're going to fill the rest up with dirt oh almost forgot our test our experiment they say they like it on the roots so flip these plants up put it back on the roots Now we're going to add the rest of the soil. And just like with all my other tomato plants, I'm trying to bury them deeply in a pot. You can actually do this very easily. Um, so I just put them a little bit lower than the edge of the pot. And then you just keep adding soil until they are completely covered up with the exception of the top leaves.
that's all there is to it. Now we're going to do the rest of them without the micro risin. So I put them all over here because they're going to get like a good amount of sun, but a lot of shade. And that's what I really want for them. And I watered them until I saw water coming out of the drain holes here at the bottom. Um, once I saw that water flowing there, I knew that it had enough water. And I'm just going to keep them watered probably every other day until I know that they've established. Now, the one thing you might have noticed is I haven't put cages on here yet. I am planning on doing some cages. Just it's hot. I'm going to wait until they get bigger. So this is going to be the last bed that we're planting today because that bed down there is for my brassicas and they are just not big enough right now. So what we're going to put in here is uh, some summer squash and these are actually vining types. They're in the machata variety. So there's like pep pepo, maximo, machata, and one other kind. I can't remember the, the name of it, but the, it's different kinds of squash and that's both summer squash and winter squash have that and so i wanted to try this variety because i'm told that it holds up better in our climate particularly around the squash bugs so i'm going to be putting these guys right here in hopes that i can get a nice big crop of summer squash now normally i cover these but I really want to test this theory out. I cover the stems usually for the squash vine borers, but I really, I really want to, I really want to test this theory out. So I'm actually not going to cover them, at least not yet. I am leaving two of them on. Normally I would not leave two. I would just narrow it down to one, but I am going to leave two for the time being and see how they do. So we got our first one in here and this is the lemon drop squash. And it is the Machado variety, and it uh, is a climbing variety. Okay, so the next one, this guy right here, and he is the Trombocino. Trom Tromboncino? Trombocino? Sounds like cappuccino. Trombocino. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's how I remember it. Somebody told me that little hint. All right. There's still a lot of roots in this bed. in here and these you don't want to bury too deeply um, they don't necessarily they do root along the stems particularly this variety but i don't want it it's not like a tomato where you want to have it super deep but what i do want to do is i do want to allow as it grows to let it kind of root along the stem but not like super berry I'm just gonna let it touch the ground And this is the scallop Peter Pan. Now they don't look like much right now. They're super tiny, but these three right here will take up this entire, you know, half or three quarters of a bed. So I'm really not going to plant anything else in here. And I'm just going to see how big they get, how much they climb. I mean, this one's already got flowers that are going to be coming in soon. Probably a little too early for it. It's going to be big. <laughs> so over here on this side of the bed, um, if you, I don't know if you guys have ever noticed, but my uh, trellis here doesn't come the full length of the bed. Um, I did that purposely because I wanted to leave this part open to use for other things. And what I'm planning on using this for is peas. So I'm going to grow a bunch of peas right in this spot here. And then they're going to climb each other and this trellis. And so we're going to plant those. And you do direct seed those one inch down. It's probably 
It's probably still a little too hot, but they'll probably do fine. You know, it's funny. I don't know what I was thinking. I bought this huge pack of like 300 peas and uh, then I had this pack of like 40 and I used like one and a half of these. So <laughs> apparently had it in my mind that I really wanted peas. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to wait until these germinate and then these guys are going to end up being my succession plantings. If I can fit them in, I very much doubt I'm going to be you know, fitting in 300 seeds when I probably did like maybe 40, 50, probably 50. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna get this all watered in. We're gonna water the corn and the onions again and probably the potatoes just to make sure everything has a nice, good, uh, wet environment. Um, it, it is very dry soil, especially in this bed. So I wanna make sure that it really sucks up and absorbs what I've just put down. I'll probably be watering everything once a day at this point, uh, just to keep, especially like the carrots and the onions because they are pretty high and, and right at the top of the soil. So it dries out super fast um, until I see them sprout. Once they sprout, these guys are on their own. The sprinkler system runs twice a week. They're gonna have to deal with that because I'm, not into fussy plants and uh, hopefully they survive you know I whenever I plant especially direct seeded plants I'm always like is it actually gonna come up I'm always thinking to myself they're not gonna come up none of this is gonna work I need extra seeds because none of these are gonna work but they always do you know eventually sometimes they take forever but eventually they do pop up <laughs> so let's get these watered I hope you guys enjoy spending time with me today I had fun with you it is very hot. I cannot wait to get inside and cooled off, but uh, we got a lot planted, almost four beds, so three beds. And you know, these, this I'll probably plant in another week or two. But thanks so much for hanging out with me. If you wanna see how I cleared out these beds, I'm gonna put that video up now. Happy gardening, guys. Mm -hmm.